I'm Jonathan Lee from PaulTan.org. The current A-Class marked a shift in Mercedes-Benz's compact car strategy. The first and second generation models were small, MPV-like hatchbacks that offered plenty of space but didn't really sell well in Malaysia. The third generation model, however, was more conventional, less spacious but more importantly, more stylish, enabling Mercedes to gain a strong foothold in the premium hatchback market. Now, this fourth generation Mercedes-Benz A-Class offers up much the same formula, but aims to fix all the predecessor's shortcomings. But has it worked? We're here in Croatia to find out. The new A-Class features a sharper, more minimalist design with a more aggressive front end. There's the trapezoidal front grille available again with chrome pins as well as these tapered headlights. And these feature 18 LEDs for each side. The headlights will be able to turn off each LED individually, allowing the high beam to be used permanently without blinding other motorists. Globally, the A-Class will be available with three engines from launch, including two petrols and one diesel. However, the ones that we're interested in is the A200 and A250 petrols. The A200 uses a 1.3-litre four-cylinder turbocharged petrol engine from Renault. It makes 163 horsepower and 250 newton meters of torque. That's seven horsepower more than before. The seven-speed dual-cut transmission is not from Mercedes, but from Gitrag. There's also the A250, which uses a two-liter four-cylinder engine made by Mercedes. It's a brand new unit, and it makes 224 horsepower and 350 newton meters of torque. That's 13 more horsepower than before. That car's seven-speed dual-cut transmission is from Mercedes, but has been retuned for improved performance. Along the side, the longer wheelbase, the lower front end, and the strong character line that runs from the front to the rear of the vehicle give it a more dynamic look. The wheels measure anything between 16 and 19 inches in diameter. Finally, at the rear of the car, the tapered glass house emphasizes the rear shoulders, while the taillights are now wider and slimmer than before. Now, let's have a look at the interior. On the inside, the A-Class features a similar design to the E and S-Class, with a flat screen display up front as well as these cool turbine-style air vents. The ambient lighting system is available with up to 64 colours and it now illuminates the air vents as well. The infotainment system uses the new Mercedes-Benz user experience. There's a home screen with icons for each of the car's functions and you can control the screen using either the new touchscreen or the touchpads either on the steering wheel or down here on the centre console. The voice control system is also all new and it can be activated by saying, Hey Mercedes, how can I help you? The system understands natural voice commands. So instead of asking it to say, adjust the climate control to a set temperature, you can simply say, Hey Mercedes, how can I help you? I'm feeling cold. I'm setting the temperature to 22.5 degrees. There you go. The rear of the car is pretty spacious. The A class has grown by nearly every dimension. And as such, there's plenty of headroom, legroom, and shoulder room. Things you couldn't say of the previous model. The boot now measures 370 litres. That's 29 litres more than before. You can now also fold the seats in a 40-20 split configuration to increase space. The boot aperture is also 20 millimetres wider because of the new two-piece taillight design. Now, let's go for a drive. The A200 is powered by a downsized engine, 1.3 litres instead of 1.6, and it definitely feels it. There's a little bit of turbo lag at low revs, followed by quite strong mid range punch, but it does run out of puff at higher RPMs. The one we're in is the A250, which definitely feels like a faster car, feeling much stronger across the rev range. The dual clutch transmissions on both cars are just about acceptable as automatics. I feel that the A250 is probably a little bit faster on downshifts and it's also faster in manual mode. Both engines are smooth and refined, but again, it's the A250 that's the quieter of the two, due to the extra bulkhead that reduces noise. Road and wind noise is still not quite up to the standards of a premium car, but it's much better than the old car. In terms of handling, the A-Class is up a bit of a mixed bag, and that's partly due to the steering, which feels a little bit vague. Now, that's probably because of the active steering assist, which, aside from 
providing lane keep assist will also counter steer the car when you're oversteering as well as helping to reduce torque steer. As a result, the steering feels a little bit muted but it does get sharper when you put it into sport mode. The ride on these adaptive dampers are certainly better than before but it's still just a little bit too stiff even in comfort mode. Sport mode is just too uncomfortable for daily use. On the flip side, there's very little roll and there's plenty of grip so you can hustle it through the corners. It's just the same that the steering is so vague. Overall, the new Mercedes A-Class is a definite step up from its predecessor. It looks great, it has plenty of new technology and it's more refined than its previous model. However, we can't really say for sure how well it drives until we try local cars on local roads. So do look out for our localised review later on. <laughs>